Hello and welcome to this episode of Citizen Meta One. So as you can probably tell, I'm going to be testing out all of the base metahumans. And if you're uncomfortable watching feminine characters with my voice, then you might want to skip the rest of these episodes. I gotta do what I gotta do. So let's get right into this. Today we're starting off with Pia. She is one of the main uh, base humans that you can use to breed or blend other metahumans, but I think that she looks great uh, as is, and I wanted to test out how she looks. Pretty much fresh stock out of the metahuman uh, collection out of Bridge. So I have been learning a lot about puppeting metahumans live. This is a very, very nuanced process, and uh, what I've been telling people is that you could give the same metahuman to different creators and they're going to get different quality results across the board as far as rendering and lighting and especially, especially for performance capture and dealing with them live like you're seeing here. And I have been learning a lot of nuances about the different metahumans even from just testing a couple new ones with my existing system. So a lot of this is just talking so that you can see the metahuman moving and whatnot. And something to call out that's especially um, incredible about Pia is her stock haircut right here. It's a very long groom, long hair, and of course it has physics. So I can shake my hair like this, uh, I can move my body, and the hair is reacting really well and dealing with the collisions of the body and even my custom secret collisions that I have going on. And just all out incredible. I cannot believe how uh, good she looks. Um, here's the hands for Pia. Uh, I'm using index controllers again. So there's a little bit of nuance with this. Uh, this is the procedural hand and still needs a little bit of work, but overall, I mean, quite convincing. Uh, I was able to fix the shoulders. This is actually a brand new, fresh Unreal Engine 4.26.2 project with some fresh stock imported metahumans and the set behind me, I'm gonna be designing all new sets, is 100% from Quixel Mega Scans. And I'm gonna be trying to stick to pretty much uh, what I'm calling stock uh, Unreal Engine, which I consider metahumans now, which is insane, and Quixel. So that's basically all we're going to be seeing um, for this project for, for quite a while anyway. So this is Pia. Uh, in what I would consider a medium shot, and I'm gonna move her into a wider shot and from the side a little bit. So we're gonna slide over here. So I've repositioned to a wider shot, and this is as wide as this performance system will really allow you to do. If you look carefully, I am not puppeting the lower body at all. However, we do allow for a little bit of body movement. And while this is limiting to not do full body, I actually think that a large, large portion of content is shot basically from this wide and then closer. So uh, this is as far as I want to QC. As soon as we get into live puppeting of full body, we start to deal with all sorts of other stuff that I will eventually get to. So let's check out some of the collisions without being too uh, offensive here. Uh, this is my waist collision, right? So my hands are not going through it. Uh, chest collision isn't updated to form fit her body, but is actually working pretty well uh, Generically, so that's pretty good. The physics hands are doing what they should the head is definitely not profiled yet but even this um, Doing a pretty good job of at least not allowing the hands to go right through the head There's a little bit of space between the actual collision, but overall I think that this is really good uh, Here's her hand extension. Uh, we don't stop elbow snapping yet but if you're careful, you can do some um, poses out here and just not snap the elbow out completely. So this is our first look at Pia. Very long hair. Um, something also to note as I've been puppeting her is that she has very thin and long arms. And I actually don't do uh, real world body calibration yet. Uh, if you've ever played VR chat, you might know what that means. So I am very much puppeting her virtual body with my two scale real world body. I'll explain that more as we uh, delve deeper into this system. But here we are checking out Pia. 
with the long hair and the very thin arms, at least that's what I'm noticing. And now we're gonna check out our next metahuman. Can't wait. And welcome back, this is Trey. So um, one of the main things that I notice as I'm performing with Trey, again, unscaled, unscaled mocap, un live retargeted, etc., is that he is a bigger person um, in the virtual world. And if you've messed with the human, MetaHuman Creator app, there are three sizes, I believe. I haven't really looked into this completely. There's gonna be small, medium, and tall. I think that's what they call it, I forget. And Trey here, I believe, is a default tall human. So what's interesting is that Pia before was a medium, and Trey, again, being tall, is that his arms are actually shorter than Pia's, which I can sense here, but his torso overall is taller and his head is higher. I just poked myself in the eye, and for a reason, my real world head, get this, is right here. This is where my eyes are, basically. But Trey's head is up here, which is like basically with my head, hands on like my, almost the top of my head. So this is because I have not scaled my tracking skeleton. We can call it that for now. I don't know if I'm ever gonna really explain this uh, on this channel necessarily, but I will implement a uh, scaling system in the future. But it's something I've noticed is that Trey is just a lot taller than Pia and it does affect how you perform. Trey's hands also look great. Again, I'm focusing on hands, arms, and face, so I look at metahuman hands an awful lot. And his hands um, are better scaled than the first metahuman I was using too, I must say. Uh, and I really like how his hands are performing with the index controllers and the procedural hand system. Again, we do have some uh, finger clipping here. We're not tracking anything like that. Trey's hair. Uh, really cool. It uh, actually has a little bit of wobble on the beard. The beard has a little bit way, way too much stock wobble happens on the beard. I would, don't imagine they wobble this much. Maybe they do. I cannot grow a beard for my life in the real world. So maybe they, maybe beards do wobble like this. But his other hair is uh, very short, but it's really nice how the, the fade looks. I have a somewhat similar haircut in real life that the up here, again, the scaling is a little off here for me, but this very uh, short uh, hair that fades into the longer hair on the side just looks really detailed and uh, really nice, kind of incredible. This is the uh, upper body that I'm used to from my, my earlier tests, and again, we have the shoulders working, but there's a funny nuance actually to performing this with the elbows, that they get a little bit too close together given the size of my actual real world body and Trey's larger, and large I mean by metahuman defines large skeleton, uh, is a little different. And that's something I'm still working out if it's on my side and how I'm gonna correct for that. But the introduction of different scaled bodies and skeletons in metahumans has already completely thrown a new wrench into my live performance system. But overall, again, brand new project, it's working really well out of the gate. So here we are in a slightly wider three-quarter angle. I haven't upped the intensity of the key light, so it's a little bit darker, but I actually think that's kind of interesting because this is a slightly, slightly, slightly more realistic exposure if we were, say, just maybe bouncing a light source that didn't have like a 6K or 12K or very bright light bouncing back from what is a three-quarter back uh, backlit scene. We'll talk about lighting in the future. Uh, I actually saw a new video on how to light metahumans, and that is a topic that I am very interested in. But just checking out a slightly wider shot of the body. Uh, we can check out my shoulder system is now back and intact, which it wasn't before. Uh, the facial animation, again, that's better to probably watch in the wide shot, but it's um, back as it should be. The first demo I did, sadly, uh, wasn't perfect for the retargeting that I did, but hey, this whole thing's a work in progress. In a year from now, I intend to have this system be even better. Let's check out the collisions on the body. Uh, it's amazing how much more realistic this makes it feel when you can't put your hands through your body, right? So you can do things like, we're talking about you, and then we're talking about me. You, you do it this way. Me, I've got collisions on my chest. So there's no hands going through this chest, okay? 
And so, yeah, that is it. I am gonna be just testing out all the different metahumans and changing up some of the lighting, testing out some of the new Quixel Mega Scan sets here that you can see over here and more brightly lit over there. And this whole thing, all of this is pretty much free. Metahumans are free. Unreal Engine is free. And this virtual set here is free. The game is a changing, but here I am adapting and trying to make the best of it. So again, this is Trey and Trey is going to sign out the video. I'm going to move back into the close-up though. So that wraps it up for this video. We got to check out some new metahumans, Pia and Trey. And uh, just for some behind the scenes context, I have completely migrated to a brand new fresh uh, Unreal Engine project and all the coding and logic is now retargeted. Ooh, a little clipping there. Um, is Everything is retargeted and working as intended for now on the live MetaHuman rig. And from a developer point of view, it's just drag and drop. I basically load up my system. I have a custom game mode, a custom player controller, and then we just have our different pawns, if you've ever opened up Unreal Engine. And all I do is swap out the models. I swap out the head, the body, the torso, and the hair, and all the logic still works. So this is the exact same rig as Pia, and all the metahumans should work in theory. I'll be testing them. They'll all work with this exact same rig, same hardware, and I'm pretty excited to be testing out and uh, to continue to evolve it. Checking out the collisions just once more. And I will check you on the next video, probably as one of the new metahumans. Oh, check this out. Let me know in the comments below, which metahumans do you want to see puppeted next? Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. Probably won't. I'm probably going to do what I want, but let me know. I'll see you on the next video.